Hi guys, it's Lucy. Today I wanted to talk to you about two books that I read、um, earlier this January, and both of which I fully enjoyed. And I wanted to go a bit more in depth, so we'll only talk about these two.、Um, the first one is Underland by Robert McFarlane, and the second one is The Heart Is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. So. Um, first on Underland, I picked this book up、um, at the bookstore because I recognized the author. And just a preamble into、uh, Robert McFarlane, I first come across him through、um, another book called Lost Worlds:、um, colon, a spell book. So Lost Worlds was、um, is an art book that I saw first displayed in one of the、um, independent bookshops in the city when I was shopping for Christmas presents, and this was a few years ago. And since then, I've gifted this book so many times、um, to people, especially the ones with the families, and they've always been a huge hit.、Um, so what's special about Lost Worlds,、um, this particular spell book? So think A for apple, B for ball. Um, the words that were chosen to go into Lost Worlds,、um, one of the common things is that these were words that had been taken out of the 2007 edition of the Oxford Junior Dictionary. So I'll give you an example of some of these words that I、um, that I made notes on. So A for acorn, bluebell,、um, dandelion, heron, lark, newt. Um, otter, raven, willow, etc. So, these were replaced by words like broadband, voicemail, and there were others along the same technological theme. You could really see、um, the highlight being that our society has moved more、uh, away from nature,、um, and this is impacting especially. The younger generations and this disconnection is something I think to be mourned. Not really, I don't think it's something、um, to be celebrated because nature is so important to us. And if children are becoming more agnostic or apathetic towards the the wonders of nature,、um, that that presents itself as a problem. So I really appreciated、um, the this collection of words and the illustrations on top of that were. Done fabulously. Robert McFarlane provided the text,、um, so for each of these words, you get a little poem. So he's like half author, half poet, and you could. The writing is amazing. The word use he has a really unique way with words, which I'll give some more examples on、um, about Underland later on. But、um, if I can figure out how to do this on YouTube,、um, I'm going to insert a picture of the Kingfisher page that I found on Google, which was one of my favorites. And reading two three lines from this,、uh, so you get a gist of what the text sounds like. So for Kingfisher, the color giver, fire bringer, flame flicker, rivers quiver, gold flare, wing fan, whip crack, the Kingfisher, Zingfisher, Singfisher, and、uh, and the last line, rainbow bird that sets the stream alight with burn and glitter. I'm not sure if anybody else would think it. An overstatement, but I really feel like the rhyming made everything. It fe- it felt like there was a sort of crescendo or some sort of tempo adjustment. It just kept going faster and faster, and it really felt to me like there was a bird flying around, and it's going fast, like just like the kingfisher bird. It makes a lot of these words come alive. The way that Robert McFarlane、um, composed these little. Mini snippets on the ones the entries that were especially like birds or, um, um or other animals like um otter or newt, it was extremely extremely well done. So, I need to buy this book for myself one day. But that was just a really long preamble of appreciation for Lost Worlds, a spell book. So going into、um, Underland more specifically, this. Is a book that defines the modern subterranean world for me, and that's a big statement because I've been, I've never really thought about the subterranean world beyond、uh, subway <laughs> trains and basements. So,、um, it's a collection of his journeys into spaces, places, and and journeys that、um, 
take us to various parts of the world, but it's not like your normal travelogue or adventure writing. So Robert McFarlane goes beyond the narrative and the descriptive and is much more, um, as a rule, insightful and contemplative based on what I observe. So short examples is um, a lot of sh brief passages that make you think a lot. So in the Mendip, uh, Mendip's burial grounds in Somerset, England, um, he writes, we are often more tender to the dead than to the living, though it is the living who need our tenderness most. And in the Bowlby mines in Yorkshire, so these are uh, mines that tunnel out from subterranean to the coastline and beyond. So think the ocean near the coastline, you've got water on top, but the mines are still running out and above you, if you were in the mines, it would be the ocean directly. So, which is pretty cool. And he talks about the mines a bit more, but um, in Bowlby, um, th those mines serve a double purpose, which was a research lab for the for proving the existence of dark matter. I don't know the specifics, but it sounds like um, a Herculean task, <laughs> almost. Um, he asks the scientist, uh, why are you searching for dark matter? And the answer um, he got was to further our knowledge and to give life meaning. If we're not exploring, we're not doing anything, we're just waiting. And um, he concludes himself that sometimes in the darkness, perhaps you could see more clearly. And, you know, another um, another line, like resurfacing now from the Bowlby Mines, he, he just says at the end, surfacing into this blinding light seems like stepping into ignorance. A lot of these... Um, a lot of these sentences at the end pepper throughout of him just thinking out loud. Extremely, extremely insightful. And on a large scale, um, you know, besides besides um, England, he goes into um, Lake Tamavo in Italy and the Karst in Slovenia. So a lot of geological information um, that was very interesting for me as well, including... Um, speleology, which is the word for the discovery and the study of caves. Um, that was completely new. Um, later on in the chapters, um, it does get heavy, and this is where I think a lot of the acclaim for this book come uh, came from. Uh, he, The later chapters, um, he goes into the Icelandic countries like Norway, and then uh, Finland, uh, Finland at the end, but also Greenland um, as well. So there's... Um, a big sense of the changing environment and the ice melt in general. A lot of new vocabulary for me here as well um, in terms of, you know, calving, uh, the calving side of um, glaciers, which is the side that is melting off, and um, also morans, which are kind of crevices um, that you get as in, in the glacier, like somewhere in the middle or just I imagine them to be holes, so these are places where you could easily fall into and um, very dangerous and to avoid. So when I when I read about these, I myself have a hard time because I feel like they're, I feel like it's something to be sad about. It's something that we should try to change and stop and slow down at least. But there isn't that much beyond my day to day that I could do something that really could feel like it's making an actual difference in the slowing of this process. And he describes this as a writer. Um, so he says, um, in Greenland, up there on the thinning ice, during those weeks, I recognized this thick speech. I would struggle often to stop language from sticking in my throat. Writing lost its point, clotted, clotted into purposelessness. Often it felt easier to say nothing or rather to observe, but not try to understand. Um, I had an Anthropocene ox on my Holocene tongue. Um, and this was referring to um, the man on the watchtower in ancient Greece who um, finally saw the fire burning far away from Troy and he was supposed to yell down and say, Troy is burning, but he couldn't because um, the enormity and the immensity of the event and and what that would mean and what is to come and all of that. So very interesting metaphor. 
and a time and also interesting in a way because I think during the weeks that he was actually traveling in Greenland when he had come back to America that was when um, the scientific community had declared that we were officially in the Anthropocene um, epoch I think it's epoch um, I didn't want to end on the heavy note for this book so um, I picked something that I thought was interesting when I was reading about um, caves, which um, he, which Robert McFarlane pointed out, you know, being someone who is so specific with language, he says uh, the language of extreme caving is often moral, uh, openly moral, sorry, openly mortal, and tacitly mythic. So stretches of passageway dead out, and one reaches terminal sumps and chokes. And the furthest uh, down regions are known as dead zones. So um, he uses a lot of these, especially when he was uh, going around miles and miles in the Parisian catacombs um, and also um, in the karst. Um, he mentions that cave divers and divers um, describe their experience in terms of ecstasy and transcendence, which, um, uh, to quote a famous diver, when you are absolutely completely in the void like being in outer space and there is no god no present no future just now and the next millisecond it's not a threatening environment uh, just total serenity so i found that quite interesting because it sounds like meditation um and these are activities that are high in um, danger and <laughs> high in adrenaline but somehow um, that puts you in a state of total calm which is very interesting if not odd so that was a lot on underland um, i'll be a bit more brief about the second book uh, the heart is a lonely hunter um, i found this book um, in the bookstore and was captivated from page one i managed to find a, a copy a cheaper copy from a used bookstore instead um, the Heart of the Lonely Hunter was first published in 1930 and being a book from 1930, the way that the author is able to so vividly depict the struggles and the viewpoints of the different um, groups of uh, minorities, I would say, and, and their issues. So you've got um, a deaf mute, um, a girl becoming a woman. Um, in poverty but she's white and um, there's a black doctor who is struggling to sort of mobilize his people and another um, two sets of people represented by a white man a restaurant owner so business owners and another white man who is a um, working class laborer so representing you know people who work for a salary um, for a living the way that the author is able to put all of these people together um, on one stage in one town and and tackle issues like poverty and sexism and racism it's been discussed i think all uh, so i won't analyze too much but it this is a great great book you won't it feels like something people should study um, but it won't read like that. It's hugely engrossing. And just because um, it's set in the Deep South, obviously it rang a lot of bells in my head because this um, Harper Lee's books, um, so first uh, To Kill a Mockingbird and um, the newer one, Ghost at a Watchman, they have been uh, huge. It's more, it's, it's, I think it's more popular in because of the fact that it also talks about racial injustice not just racism in general um so I, I think that's why um harper lee's books are more widely discussed and more widely known i would i would venture than say carson mccullers they are both written by young white women at their time so obviously harper lee is uh, has now passed she wrote this in um, 1960 I think this was her first book and she was quite young and same with um, Carson um, Carson was from Georgia and Harper Lee was from Alabama so different states but same deep south sentiments and environment and overall culture so for anyone who is 
missing um, a dose of Harper Lee, I think. Um, try the heart is a lonely hunter. You get a different feel. It's not, um, it's not so much of um, a court case or um, injustice done to one person that is so traumatic and divisive, um, but rather, the heart is a lonely hunter. I would say is a more rounded, a softer approach to looking at society at that time in general, which. Um, which was well worth, uh, well worth the time uh, spent reading, and I fully enjoyed it. So that was um, two books that I finished reading in January. I'm on to um, newer adventures now, and I hope to update you guys um, in the future. <laughs>